see the trees growing strong and tall, and the animals are coming back. Sometimes everywhere is quiet. At other times, Henry can hear leaves rustling or a bird's wing brushing the air. Often he can hear the sound of children laughing and always he is happy here. Duck still wonders about the lands beyond the horizon. But he enjoys being with friends most of all and I think he knows that sometimes the best travels are those we can only dream about. Don't you? Later in the big city, all the engines were lined up in a splendid shed. The children were delighted to meet their friends. I'm glad the little girl wrote to us, whispered Thomas to Percy. Isn't it wonderful what happiness a letter When it was time to leave, the Queen spoke specially to Thomas, who fetched her coaches. Then to Edward. And finally to Gordon, who took her away. No engines ever felt prouder than those on the Fat Controller's Railway. The Fat Controller's wife was waiting for him. As the clock struck three, there stood Sir Topham Hatt. Tired but triumphant, he gave his wife the flowers. Well, thank you, my dear. I knew this was a special birthday party, but I didn't know it was fancy dress. Everyone laughed. Rusty is sure that on a clear night it is gazing up at the mountain and that its sighs are being carried on the wind to where it once used to stand, proud and silent. I wonder if Rusty is right, don't you? Whenever James sees the red balloon, he whistles and toots. And sometimes, when he's asleep at night, James dreams he can fly too. Just like the red balloon. him with a gold medal on a red ribbon. You were very helpful at sports day. So we thought you should have a medal of your own, added the boy. My very own medal, said Thomas. Thank you. Three cheers for Thomas, the number one engine. But I still won the race, tooted Bertie. Thomas just peeped happily. <laughs>